Thanks for watching this episode of Angry Video Game Nerd. But before we jump into the show, let me tell you about this video's sponsor, ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN reroutes your connection through another country's server, giving you access to content that isn't available in your country. With ExpressVPN, I've got access to thousands of hours of extra Netflix content at my fingertips, all at the push of a button. For example, I wanted to watch the 1981 werewolf classic, Wolfen, on my laptop recently, but Netflix didn't have it available in the United States. So I fired up ExpressVPN, switched my location to the UK, and the movie came up. Not only is it easy to use, but everything loads super fast in high definition and without any buffering. ExpressVPN also encrypts your network data, keeping it secure wherever you go online. Plus, at less than $7 a month, it's a no-brainer as to why ExpressVPN is the world's number one rated VPN. Find out how you can get three months of ExpressVPN for free by visiting expressvpn.com slash cinemassacre, or by clicking the link in the description below. I've played fighters, shooters, racers, fighters, beat-em-ups, fighters. You know, when you've played a King Kong ass load of shitty games like I have, it feels like you've played them all with just a different title. I want something new. Who said that? Oh! Pac-Man 2, The New Adventures. Wow, I guess I'm gonna play that now. In Japan, this game was released as Hello Pac-Man, published by Namco. However, in the North American release, the game had a bit of controversy around it. In the 90s, a company named Accolade developed and published their own unlicensed Genesis games by reverse engineering the lockout chip. This pissed Sega off, who in 91 sued Accolade not once, but twice. They eventually settled and allowed Accolade to become a full Sega licensed publisher. This also pissed off Nintendo because Accolade was releasing so many games on their bitter rivals platform. So Accolade made another company, Ballistic, to get around publishing limits with Nintendo. And they all got this weird cheap sticker slapped on the label. The most common complaints I've heard about this game are controlling Pac-Man's mood swings while pairing vague tactics to solve each level. If you're lucky enough to have the booklet, there's some hints in the back. In the front, the game is glorified as the world's first interactive cartoon. You guide and help him with Namco's innovative character guidance interface, also known as CGI, not to be confused with the other in CGI abbreviation. There's definitely a masochism tone that makes the game feel counterintuitive to play. What the fuck? We're friends now after shooting shit stones at his face? That's a good way to get your ass kicked if you don't put someone's eye out first. Oh, I mean, come on, that looks like it hurts. Oh, right there. Oh, damn. Okay, so the first mission is to get Pack Baby some milk from the local farm. Seems simple enough. Well, that wasn't so tough. That witch is pissed. Wait, those eyes, FF? Fred Fox, could it be? The next mission is getting a flower for their friend Lucy's birthday. This time you have to take a lift to the mountains and what a hassle, this game starts to ramp up the cryptic difficulty. Unlike other point and click and decision based games, this one takes it to another level by making you a secondary godlike co-op to Pac-Man. Right here, if I don't intervene, he will just walk off this cliff like a fucking lemming. Or here, every detail is important, and the slightest fuck up can happen from almost anything in the environment. You gotta be super vigilant. This fucking hang glider is the shits. It's an exercise in frustration with no checkpoint. Luckily, there's infinite continues, but every time I get an inch further, I just fuck up and have to start all over. It's a kick in the sack. And what a shitload of fuck that was to get this stupid ass flower. 
Oh, and also, before you can leave this level, you need to find three ID cards. There's some secrets littered around too, like that pack pellet or stale ass pizza. Gross. You can also tell ghosts are nearby because their eyes are on certain objects. Eventually, after a metric ton of bullshit, you return back with the flower, everyone's happy, but guess who's not? I'd be more pissed than upset hang gliding in hell for a fucking flower I could have gotten from a store. I guess seeing as all the stores in this world are closed, Pac-Man had to go to the top of some godforsaken mountain to get them. Not like flowers happen anywhere else besides mountaintops! The third level is where Pac's shit starts hitting the fan for Pac-Man. The ghosts have stolen Pac Jr.'s guitar, now you have to go to the city and hunt down those motherfuckers. The city has a huge array of things to interact with, and for something that should only take minutes to do, it feels like hours go by. By this time, you'll notice things that are really out of place, like this fuck. To get Junior's guitar, you have to turn into Super Pac-Man and fuck up the ghosts. After defeating the ghost, you take the guitar back. Okay, so now we're on the final level, and this part is just weird. The witch is collecting ABC gum? Already been chewed gum? Why? That's nasty, man! You eventually find your way into the evil witch's science lab and come across the number sequence for the ID cards when you collect them all. Fuck this game and fuck Pac-Man. I have the ID cards, the number sequence, and he still just goes and fucks things up. What a pain in the ass it is to micromanage every- Oh! So, there are a couple good things about the game. One, it has unlimited continues, and two, the password system is pretty helpful. If you fuck up and want to go back to get it right, you can pretty easily. Every moment of the game generates a password you can find in the menu. However, if you wait too long, Pac-Man gets pissy. Okay, now the final boss. Yeah, it's definitely the gum monster. It's definitely spelled with a G. I mean, look, we all know what it looks like. Let's all just grow up and get our minds out of the gutter. Now this dickhole, shit-encrusted, poopy, fuck-fuck final boss isn't really too hard to beat. As long as you avoid his arms, stay in super Pac-Man mode, and keep shooting the fuck out of the gum monster's face until he goes back into the gross gum pit he came from. I finished this game at 21%, which goes to show there is so much more to it if you have the time and patience. Is it a shitty game? Well, sort of, but... Sort of not. It's different, it's an acquired taste, it's a radical jump from the fast-paced simple maze games we all grew to love, so maybe if they just didn't call it Pac-Man 2, it would have gone over a lot better. It's an interesting game, it's worth having in your collection, you just gotta put up with Pac-Man's emotional outbursts and just separate it from the original Pac-Man, that's all. What the fuck? What the fuck? Oh! Oh, what the fuck? Man, fuck this game.